Hi, my current events topic is identity theft. So throughout the year I've just been researching this topic and like the different aspects of this topic, the different types of identity theft that are out there. Um, the most like common type of identity theft and also like which age group is affected the most and why. So identity theft is where a person takes another person's private information, like their social security number or their address and their phone number and email, and they use it for personal gain, normally like financially, like they might take their bank information and use it to buy high-end products like Apple products and then sell them on eBay for a lot of money. Um, and identity theft has become more common because of the increased use of technology. It makes um, <clears throat> accessing a person's information much easier. Mm -hmm. And a lot of sites are secure, but you know, data breaches can happen more often because of hacking computers and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and credit card fraud is the most common type of identity theft. So finding out somebody's credit card information and using it to buy things. And normally what they'll do is they'll buy a lot and they'll... And the most likely place where your identity will be stolen is at your bank. Because um, identity thieves can just go and hack the bank's whole system and get access to hundreds of people's personal information and so now they have access to hundreds of people's accounts and can use that money for whatever they want to buy. And people between the ages of 18 and 29 are most affected by this. And I and so there are also many websites that provide tips of ways to prevent your identity from being stolen. But um, it's only really with credit card companies that there are like systems put into place to prevent things. And you'll see that later, like with identity theft, that there is really not much that corporations can do to prevent this. Um, it's mostly just the parents' job of protecting their children and their information. So my first topic is credit card fraud. And so that is where an identity thief takes your credit card information and uses it to buy high ticket items because they just have an unlimited access to the money. And since your name is attached to that card, they won't ever have to pay back the loan that they've taken from credit card companies. So one way they do this is by skimming. So this is often done by cashiers when they scan your credit card and like when you hand them your credit card they will scan it in this small device that takes all the information off the metal strip on the back of your card and it allows them to access all this information and use it later by putting it on the blank card and then using it to buy things. So also this commonly happens with e-commerce, which is electric commerce, which is any transaction done using the internet. And so, and one of my statistics that I found was that in 2008, about $4 billion were lost due to electronic fraud. And so for prevention, from electronic fraud, you need to look at the address bar for any website to make sure that it's secure. So each website has HTTP at the top, and that's just for any old website. But if it has HTTPS, that means that it's safe and secure, and that they have a system put into place to protect your personal information. So one of the major credit card corporations is Visa. So it doesn't even, it doesn't appear on Google Maps at all. That's like, you can't just Google it and find out where it is. Um, and so 
Um, they have when you go in, well, they have a moat, like an actual moat around their headquarters. And then past that, they have many lines of fences. Um, and the, they don't actually tell you how many cameras are on the inside. And they have um, 400 cameras on the outside, along the fencing and moats and things like that. And then once you get inside, they have to do a background check. And if you're all clear, they give you a special badge that allows you to go through the facility. And so once you've done that, the way to get into the rest of the building is you have to go through what they call man traps. So they have two of these throughout the building. And so the first one, you need your special badge that you got and your fingerprint has to match the badge's information. And then the second man trap that you have to go through to actually get to the databases is a concrete room. It all has motion detectors. The camera on the ceiling can detect handwriting on the smallest scrap of paper. There are radio frequencies to make sure no one brings in a cell phone that is not permitted or a cell phone of any type. And then once again, you need to use your special badge and your fingerprint. So as you can see, they have put many precautions into place to <clears throat> try to prevent people from getting into the facility that are not authorized to work there and to prevent people's identities from being stolen. And so one of the things that um, I learned from watching this video about Visa is that in-store shopping actually increases the risk of having your identity stolen than online shopping. Because when you go into the store, you hand your card to another person and they scan it and they withdraw the money from it but when you shop online you're the one putting your information into the computer it's not somebody else doing it for you so more on skimming um, how they do it is they copy the information on the metal strip on the back of the card and that has the number of your credit card um, your pin number and they can copy it onto a blank prepaid credit card, which you can basically buy anywhere. It's just a blank credit card with no identity attached to it. And they put it in an embosser, which if you look on the front of your credit card, it has a bunch of numbers with raised bumps. And so they will copy that with an embosser onto the blank prepaid credit card and then they program it with your information. So basically, they just made a copy of your credit card that they can use anywhere. So my second topic is document fraud. And so this is where information from documents like passports and driver's licenses are stolen. And so this is common for people who don't want to, for passports, for people who don't want to um, go through the long process of applying for a passport and having that background check. Maybe they have something in their past that may be illegal and they don't want to disclose that information to the government. And so they can take yours and use it. They can forge a new one under another person's name. and. In a study, and from a chart that I found, that I'll put up here, right here, um, that in the first quarter of 2014, 490 of the 1,164 passports used were forged. And this is just within the US. So, um, about a third of them about um, half of them, a little less than half of them, were forged. So, my next topic is medical identity theft. And so, I'm just, um, that's when um, someone steals your medical 
um, information and this is normally used to get like treatment for any ailments if they don't have the money to pay for it they will use your name and then you'll have to pay for it later also to get pharmaceuticals like drugs and things like that and just anything related to just things related to anything medical and so in 2014 13 in 2013 44 percent of the data breaches that were recorded within the US any sort of data breach was medical so that's only a little less than half and also in 2013 it was recorded that within the previous two years of a person using healthcare 90 percent of them had reported a data breach and 38 percent of the people had more than five incidents of having their data stolen so the cost that has so the amount of money stolen within the U.S. for medical fraud ranges from $80 billion to $230 billion. And it's highest within urban communities like around D.C., L.A., and the lower area of Florida. And you can see this in the graph right here. And so, <clears throat> because there are so many people, it's so much easier to steal their information and go unnoticed. And once again, young adults are more, most affected by this identity theft because they are so unaware of, of suspicious behavior. And <clears throat> like child identity theft that I'll talk about next, there isn't much a corporation can do once your identity has been stolen. Um, it's really your responsibility to get it back. So my next and final topic is child identity theft. And this is where an adult will steal a child's identity and use it for normally financial reasons. And um, this is very common also because if you take a child's identity it will most likely not be dis discovered until they've turned 18 and they go to apply for like a scholarship at a college or apply for a job. And um, so 43% of the children that have been reported to have their identity stolen range from ages 15 to 18. And 70% of the ones recorded were involved in loan and credit accounts. And this, <clears throat> and so the total of them were 6,948 out of a total of 9,926 cases reported. So this is a huge number of um, teenagers' identities being stolen. And they don't realize this until they go to do something that requires a background check. Like, I read an article that had an anecdote of a girl who went to donate her blood and they denied her, and she didn't know why. And then, so she went back to the Red Cross and asked why this had happened, and they said, because you had earlier gone in to get treatment for AIDS, and we can't take your blood if you have AIDS. And, but she doesn't have AIDS, and so she realized that her identity had been stolen and been used to get treatment for some random person who had AIDS. And so, like medical identity theft, child identity theft, there's like nothing that many people can do but the parents to prevent their child's identity from being stolen. And there are sites that give tips on how to prevent it, but really, once it's happened, you're sort of on your own. And it's a long and difficult process to clear your child's debts.